On the night of May the 7th, a direct hit by a Russian missile destroyed the Grigory Skovoroda National Museum in the village of Skovorodinivka in Kharkiv region, said Zolochev community leader Viktor Kovalenko. The museum was located in an estate of the 18th century near the tomb of the Ukrainian philosopher Grigory Skovoroda. The shell hit the roof of the building. A fire broke out as a result of the impact. The fire embraced all the museum premises. A 35-year-old man who oversaw the museum was injured. Doctors diagnosed him with a leg injury and sent him to hospital. The room was actually destroyed. The most valuable exhibits of the collection were saved. They were moved to a safe place in advance. The Russian army twice fired on the village of Udy in Zolochev district. The head of the community, Viktor Kovalenko, said that helicopters fired at the outskirts of the village last night. One house was destroyed, two were damaged. Closer to last night, artillery struck Udy. Two private houses were destroyed, two more were damaged. Their windows, doors and roofs were smashed. There are no civilian casualties. In total, 22 people have died in the Zolochev community since the beginning of the Russian invasion. About 700 houses have been destroyed and there are no schools and kindergartens left, community leader said. The Azov regiment reported that the Russian army fired on a car on the territory of the Azovstal plant last night. The vehicle was moving to evacuate civilians sheltered in the plant. As a result of the shelling, one Ukrainian fighter was killed and six others were wounded. Last night, another stage of the evacuation of civilians from occupied Mariupol, as well as the territory of the Azovstal plant, took place. 500 civilians were evacuated. This was announced by the head of the President's office, Andriy Yermak, and UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. According to the mayor's office, tens of thousands of civilians remain in Mariupol, living in difficult conditions of humanitarian catastrophe. The city has a total shortage of food, drinking water and medicine, so the evacuation must continue. In Donetsk region, the Russian army fired on 15 settlements during the day. One person was killed and four others were injured in Liman. This was reported by the National Police of Donetsk region. At least 44 civilian objects were destroyed. Residential buildings, farm buildings, life supporting facilities. Police documented war crimes of the Russian Federation. Serhii Haidai, the head of the Luhansk Regional State Administration, said that the Russians had fired 24 times on residential areas in Luhansk region 24 hours a day. Popasna and Hirske community suffered the most. A hospital was damaged and artillery attacks at the Azot chemical plant continue in Severodonetsk. This is the third largest ammonia producer in Ukraine. In total, 36 houses have been damaged or destroyed in the past and many people still remain in the region. Last night, the Russian military fired at Mykolaiv again. The Operational and Recovery Brigade of Power Engineers, who were trying to restore power supply in one of the city's neighborhoods, came under fire. Power engineers were not injured. The equipment failed and had to be repaired again. In Luhansk region, a 15-year-old girl with short legs took four injured adults by car from Popasna. The head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration, Serhii Haidai, told about it on Telegram. People tried to evacuate from Popasna on their own, but the car was shot by the Russians. Two men, including the driver, were seriously injured by shell fragments. So the girl had to get behind the wheel, drive to Bakhmut. There were mines in the checkerboard pattern. It was impossible to pass, but I somehow drove there. And then there was the corpse of a woman and a pillar. I drove past it too, and when there was the next turn right, my legs were shot. There was nothing I could do, the car stalled. I barely started it and we went on. Of course, it was not easy for me, it was very painful, but still at least somehow. I could not leave them under fire. The girl, as well as other wounded Ukrainians, were taken by evacuation train from Bahmut to Lviv, the first medical association of Lviv reports.